Now, just like it sounds, the toString method on an array uh, will return a string representation of that array. So if I uncomment out my code here, then I have this array that is just a string that says this, and then a number one, and then a string that says time. And if I run array six dot two string, and then I output that string to the screen, then you can see that it returned this uh, string that just has uh, commas, and um, and you can use this variable throughout your code. This is usually used uh, just for um, you know maybe logging out an array to the console or something like that. Um, so that is the two string method. Um, now let's take a look at the for each method. The for each method will execute a given function uh, for each element in the array. Um, so let me go ahead and uncomment out these lines here. Um, and you can see that we just have a test array, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm outputting that to the screen here so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, so now let's go ahead and write that callback function that we're going to use with our for each method. Um, so I'm just going to call this function times 10. And now uh, this callback function has access to a few different parameters here. Um, one of those is the element, and that is the current element as it's going through the for each method. Um, this is the current element in the array. And then we have access to the index, which is the index of that element. And then we have access to the entire array, um, the entire original array. Um, so let's just look at an example as to what it would look like to use all of these. Um, so I can type in array, which is the original array, and then I'm going to access the, in, the current index of that array, and then I'm going to set that current index equal to element times 10. And now let's go ahead and run this for each function, and then I'll kind of explain a little bit better um, as to what it did. So Let's do array seven dot for each, and then we'll use that times 10 function. And then let me output that to the screen. Okay, and now you can see that our original was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then after we ran our for each function, now the array is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So what happened here was that when we ran this for each method, it runs times 10 for every element in the array. So it goes through. So say for example, we're looking at our first element here, one. Um, so this element would equal one, the index would be zero, and the array equals the original array. So we're accessing the zeroth index of the original array and setting that equal to the element, which is one times 10. So that's what you get there. And then it just goes to the next spot. So and then the next element's two, and the index is one, and with the current array. Um, and then it goes through the entire array like that and runs that function for every element in the array. Let's take a look at a slightly more advanced uh, example. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, comment out that first example, and then uncomment this code here. Okay, so we have an array of objects, and all these objects are are uh, three people with a name and an age. You can see here I've already written out uh, the function that I'm going to use for this uh, for the for each method, and what this does is it just outputs each of these people uh, in the HTML. So you can see if we go in here, um, it will print out person is equal to the index plus one. So for the zeroth index, that would be one. And then for the next is two, next is three. And then it uh, prints out their name and then it prints out their age. You can also see here that I'm not using uh, the array parameter anywhere in here. So if you're not using one of these in the callback functions, you can actually just go ahead and emit it and it won't uh, have any effect on the end result. So that is the for each method. Uh, as you can see, it's a little similar to a for loop, but it's a little bit more elegant and you know you don't have to worry about things like out of bounds exceptions and things like that. Um, 
So let's go ahead and move on uh, to the reverse method. Reverse is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if I uncomment out my code here, you can see I have a test array that is just zero through nine, and then I'm outputting this original array to the screen here. And if I want to reverse this array, all I have to do is do that array, and then call the reverse method, save that, and then I'll output that to the screen. And you can see that the reversed version of this array um, is nine through zero. And just so you can see what this looks like on a small array of strings, let me go ahead and comment that out and uncomment that. And you can see here that this original array is reverse this array. And then you can see that array uh, reversed here with the reverse method. So that is the reverse method for the array. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the concat method. The concat method will take an original array and it will concatenate it with other values or other arrays. Uh, so for example, let me uncomment out my code here. And you can see here I have two arrays. One is equal to ABC and the other is equal to DEF. And I've outputted both of these to the HTML here. Um, so if I was to take this variable array concat and I was to set this equal to array 91, which is my ABC array, and run concat, and then array 92, and save that, and then I'll output that to the screen. Then you can see here that this concat array is equal to both of these uh, arrays concatenated into one, ABC, DEF. And what this result would look like in code is one big array that has taken all those values and put them into one single array. Um, so you don't only need to send in um, arrays as parameters uh, for concat. Uh, you can also use some mixed parameters. So you can see, for example, here, I already have this example typed out. Um, this uh, array concat2 is equal to our ABC array concatenated with just some random values thrown in here. I have uh, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and then for my fourth parameter, I put in an array of D, E, and F. And you can see whenever I output this to the screen, it still takes all those values and concatenates it into one single array. So in JavaScript, if uh, you see here in this comment, uh, what this would look like in JavaScript would be one big array that just takes all these values and puts them into one single array uh, like that. So that is the concat method. Now we are going to take a look at the join method. The join method joins elements of an array into a single string and it does that with a separator that you can specify. Um, so if I uncomment, uncomment out my code here, um, we can see that I have a sample array right here that is just uh, 192, 168, 1, and 1. And if I wanted to join this into a string, then I could set this string 10 equal to array 10 dot join and if I just ran that without any uh, parameters, then you can see that by default, it makes a string with the uh, default separator as a comma. But I can pass in anything that I want here. I could do, if I did a period there, then you can see that now I have 192.168.1.1. Let me show you a couple of other examples using um, an array of strings. I could join this array together and you can put in a space to where it looks more like a sentence or you can put in dashes or anything that you want uh, the separator to be. Now if you have an array of characters like the third array example here, then what you can do is you can actually uh, take out everything and just do 
two quotes with no spaces in between. And instead of doing the default separator, which is a comma, it will just bunch all those together. And whenever it joins these together into a string, you can see it takes these array of characters and puts them into a single string that, um, that reads out uh, with all the characters joined together. So that is how the join method works. Um, now, let's take a look at the slice method.